Hey everybody, how's it going? It's The Daily Shooter, and today we're going to be taking a look at one of the best reflex sights on the market today, the Leopold LCO, or Leopold Carbine Optic. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started as usual by first talking about some of the technical aspects and features of the LCO. Then we'll move on, I'll give you my personal experience with it and we'll finish with my final thoughts. Now, speaking of features and tech specs, there is one thing that I really wanna try and convey to those people that are watching this video right now. And that is that I think that the LCO is probably the perfect balance of advanced technology and simplicity. And while I understand that those are two words that are on completely different sides of the spectrum, I feel that it really fits in describing the LCO. And that's because there is nothing on the LCO that is not supposed to be there. And that's something that's really important, especially in this day and age with technology. A lot of manufacturers are putting so much stuff on their optics that they're turning them into like the Mars Rover. And that can get in the way of really the primary objective of a red dot. The primary objective of a red dot is to have an optic on your rifle that allows you one single point of aim so that you have the confidence in knowing when you pull the trigger, your bullet's gonna land where that red dot is or any other corresponding dots that might be in the optic. But still, that's, that's the whole goal. You wanna put that red dot on your target, pull that trigger and have confidence in knowing that that's exactly where your bullet's gonna go. Obviously, adding a couple things like, you know, brightness intensity levels and durability, those are gonna be things that enhance that optic. But adding multiple layers upon layers of other features, to me, is just, it's, a, it, it's getting a little bit too much. So again, the LCO is kind of a good combination of features uh, and technology with the simplicity of not really adding too much to it. Now, the first thing we're gonna look at is the coating. This has a type three hard anodized coating on it, which is pretty much standard for the industry. And it's a coating that really holds up well. It helps uh, corrosion resistance. It's also kind of got a matte finish, so it's not very reflective either. Uh, one of my favorite features on this optic, however, is going to be the illumination intensity dial. And you, you notice that I said dial, and you can see it right here. It's a dial and not buttons. You know, a lot of companies are moving towards these rubberized buttons. And while I like the buttons and they're very easy to use, there's usually an up button and a down button. And you have to find one or the other. And sometimes to turn it off and on, you gotta press them both and you go through these different settings and it can kind of get annoying. Plus those rubber buttons over time might wear out. Well, here we have a metal dial. You simply turn it forward to turn the optic, you know, down or lower on you turn it backwards towards the user to make it brighter. And there's 16 different intensity levels. That's really nice as well because with 16 different levels of brightness, it allows you to really customize it to your environment, be it extremely low light, complete pitch black, or bright desert sunny day. I mean, you're going through 16 different settings through night vision all the way up to as bright as it gets, which is almost nuclear, uh, is, is fantastic. So that's something I really like. Uh, I also like the fact that there's no caps, there's no you know strange anything with the turrets. The turrets are really nice, half MOA clicks. Uh, this is waterproof again, down to 66 feet. And just as a comparison with somebody who might be looking at another large windowed optic like the EOTech, EOTech is about 33 feet, I believe with their EXPS2. So 33 feet versus the LCO, which is 66 feet. Again, the turrets are really nice, half MOA clicks. Uh, you can use a screwdriver, you can use a shell casing, a coin or anything you find on the ground that will fit in there. And all of the electronics for this particular component are located in the base or the bottom of the optic. The top is just the glass. It does have a really nice strong housing. It's 7075 uh, 70, uh, aluminum, I believe. And the glass is very nice and thick. It has a nice multi-coated lens. Uh, that multi-coating on the lens does give a little bit of reflection back to your target, uh, but not too bad if you're looking straight on. It seems to be more of a reflection if you're looking at it through, through an angle. Uh, one of the things that I like about this is if you put it a little bit forward on your rifle and you're looking through the back end at your red dot, 
uh, you don't have too much of tunnel vision, which is nice. Um, there are other optics out there that might be a little bit better at eliminating this, but still, you don't have tunnel vision too much. The closer you get this thing to your eye, however, the more tunnel vision that you get, so I suggest putting this a little bit further out, uh, even though it's not still not too bad even when you get it really close. So anyway, you have, again, all your stuff down there. You have a single CR, uh, CR123 battery. Off of that battery, you get 50,000 hours of runtime, which is pretty nice. A lot of optics these days that use that particular battery are only able to get maybe around 5,000 hours or more, but you're able to get 50,000 hours off of this particular battery in the Leupold LCO. So that's really nice. They've optimized that and you're going to get some good runtime. It does have auto off. And for those people that don't like auto off because you know you have to maybe hit a button to turn it back on this also has an auto on feature so the second it gets a little bit of movement i mean i'm talking a little bit of movement the red dot will pop back on it remembers where it was before so if you have this thing set up for nighttime or you know home defense or something like that the second you grab this thing that red dot's going to be exactly where you want it to be so that's a nice feature as well uh, it also has an integrated picatinny mount uh, one of the nice things about this particular Picatinny mount is that it holds on to a large section of rail. So there's not just this little thing that maybe holds on to one of the little T sections on your rail system. No, this is about, I would say, an inch and a half long and it holds on to several, I would say probably about three T marks on the top of your rail. Also, what looks to be a rounded off section that will actually go in your Picatinny rail section is flattened on both sides. So if you push this forward, uh, while you're tightening it down, you know that you're going to get a good index with the top of your rifle. So that's nice as well. Uh, so it's got a lot of great features. There is one downside, however. The projector on this, which projects the laser, uh, the projector is visible through the business end of the optic. So for instance, if you're looking at the front of the optic, okay, and you have it on even medium, you can actually see the little red dot in two, two spots. You can see it up near the glass and you can actually see it from the projector. The downside to that is if you're a serious user of this, you're in the military, law enforcement, or something like that, and by chance, you know, you're up against somebody who has night vision, um, that person's going to be able to see that. It's going to pick that light up really nice and bright and could potentially give you away. So uh, it's, it's not super bad, but it's bad enough to, I, I think, if somebody is within that 100-yard range, they're probably going to be able to see that projector at night. Again, depending on what level you have it and whether or not you're unfortunate enough to be going up against somebody with night vision. So <laughs> either way, that's not something that I'll ever run into, but I figured it's also something that should be mentioned, again, for those more, more serious users, SWAT users, and other people like that. So something to consider right there. Uh, again, this is a Made in America product. That's one thing that I really like. Uh, like some other products that are out there, Trigicon, uh, having a Made in America product really does add some value to any optic. Also, this is a Leupold, and we know that Leupolds, they're synonymous with quality. That's one thing that I, I like about having uh, an optic like this is you know that with that name comes quality control. That's really nice. You also get, uh, what is it, their gold ring uh, warranty. So if anything happens to it, you can go ahead and send it back. If they can't fix it, they'll replace it, which is also very nice. Okay, so now on to my experience and final thoughts. You know, my experience with this optic was great. I took it out, it was a little bit high. I would say it was maybe 10 MOA high. I made my adjustments, I brought it right down on target. I was able to hit every single time and it stayed zero. I took it off one rifle, I put it on another rifle, then I put it back on the other rifle and it was still zeroed every single time. So it's got a good mount to it. We know that the mount is well centered and we know that the, the optic, at least in my case, can handle standard rifle rounds from a 5.56. I didn't put it on anything greater, but uh, I know this is rated up to 50 caliber so you're not going to have a problem with it. You put this on your 308, you're going to be fine. You put it on a shotgun, you're going to be just fine. Uh, it worked out really well. I liked the look through it. It's got a very nice, clear looking glass. There is a small, what I would consider to be like a purple haze to it, but not very much at all. It's definitely not as bad as a lot of other optics uh, that I've seen on the market. So you're still, what you're trying to do is you're trying to justify the price range. This price range is right up there with the uh, EOTEX and a lot of other holographic sites that are on the market today. So it's not like super overpriced. As a matter of, fa matter of fact, the price just uh, came down recently. I believe this used to be like a thousand dollars on its own. So that's something to consider. I, I believe it came down a few hundred dollars. You might want to check on that. I'll put a link in the description box. Uh, I got this from Optics Planet. And if you guys wanted to pick one of these up, you can use my code, which is TDS5. That'll save you 5%. I know it's not a ton, but it's something and it helps out the channel. So I really do appreciate, appreciate that as well. But back to my final thoughts. This is one of those optics that I would, I would say is, is for a serious user. Somebody who's not falling into a lot of the gimmicks that are out there on the market right now, 
a lot of those people who are not falling into what I would consider to be a lot of the tactical features that you might get in a lot of other models. This is no nonsense. It's rock solid, it's tough, it provides a great one MOA red dot, which I forgot to mention a little bit earlier, a fine one, away, uh, one MOA red dot that's gonna allow you to reach out there a little bit further than some of the other red dots without covering up so much target. Uh, again, one MOA at 100 yards is gonna be 1.0, uh, 1.047 inches of coverage on the target. That is not much. That's gonna allow you to get those nice precise shots at some of the longer ranges, even if you put a magnifier behind this uh, and increase its capabilities, one MOA is fantastic. So I really liked it. I liked it a lot. This is definitely something that I would recommend to anybody that was going to ask me. And I think it's well worth the money. I think when you're buying a Leupold and I think when you're spending the money on something like that, you know exactly what you're getting. And, and, and I, that's the experience that I had with this here. So the Leupold LCO might be one of the best large windowed optics on the market. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be doing a comparison video on several different optics all put together. We're going to be doing a big comparison. As a matter of fact, it might be the biggest one on the internet. You guys will have to watch that, so make sure you subscribe. Anyway, check it out in the links down below in the description box. Thanks again to Optics Planet. Thank you very much to Aguila Ammunition for providing the ammunition for this video. Please like, subscribe. Have a great day.